Do you want to learn how to work with Swift UI to make a brand new design come to life? In this video series, I'm taking a design challenge and we are going to implement this UI from scratch. It's got a few different components that we're going to have to go ahead and create. And this design comes from Sarah Keeney. So what we see here is a payment calculator that can calculate the monthly payment based on a loan, a duration, which is in months, and then an APR rate. So we're essentially doing the PMT calculation from Excel or something like that. So let's dive into seeing what this actually looks like, and then we'll break down the different components that we're going to be making over the series of videos that I put out. Or I may have an all-in-one where you can just watch everything. Okay, so let's get started. So we see this is the calculator. This is running in Swift UI. I have several different components. I've got a custom slider here that allows us to go up and down in value. And then you can also do a down payment, which essentially just takes away from the loan amount. Um, I'm not sure if that's exactly how this needs to work, but that's the current functionality that we have here. And then we have this custom selector that allows us to choose different durations to sort of see what those payments are gonna look like. So that's a fully functional app. If you want to get access to any of this source code, if you want to get access to the code right now, you can jump on over to the link that is down below. So if you just click that link, you can get access to all of this code for this project. There's going to be some specialized components that we're building. I'll have all of those um, in one project, and then I'll probably break apart the special sliders and the um, segmented control as a separate project so that you could just look at that component if you wanna learn how to do a custom slider. So let's go ahead and get started and let's, let's try and break down what's gonna go into this. I'm gonna have a little markdown. This is kinda gonna be a, an idea of the direction that we're gonna need to go. I've got some resources in this markdown um, um, and this is in the project files that is gonna have that math equation that we need to implement as well as the flow of topics. So there's really three big hurdles that we're gonna to have to do in order to get this design to come to life. We're going to need to customize a slider. The Swift UI slider is not able to be customized in the way that you see this one. So we're gonna to have to learn how to do that from scratch. And then we can't use the normal segmented control. So we're gonna to have to build another sort of segmented control here that's going to have a bunch of cool features. It allows you to go left and right, have multiple elements, you can select between them. And it even has this special uh, opacity, which is from masking, that allows you to know that there's more elements on either the left side or the right side as you scroll on the edges. So that's a fun little UI element we're gonna learn how to build. We're gonna learn how to create this card layout. We're gonna learn how to create the overlap up here with the navigation bar. This stuff's a little bit complicated, but once you learn how to do it, you'll be in a better position. So we're gonna try and quickly mock up this UI and just get you started with Swift UI make you comfortable with sort of a flow. A lot of times when I'm working on something like this, I'll go down different rabbit holes. I will try different things. One of the hardest things to, to figure out was getting this look at the top. Um, for whatever reason, some of the there are there are multiple ways of doing anything. And that's one of the challenges with Swift UI is you go down one path and it works, but it feels a little bit janky or it's not quite what you want and then you discover another way of doing it. So we're going to take some of my learnings to actually implement this, but when I am implementing something like this, it can be a little bit messy. And we'll start off just making things messy, um, and then we'll work towards refactoring. So where we're gonna start is the navigation toolbar item and the background color. Then we're gonna get into doing a custom slider so we can sort of see what some of this will look like. So, um, well, you see the background up top. We're gonna to do a custom slider, which is gonna be here. And we can see a little preview of these different types of sliders, being able to customize that. And then we're going to work on the payment sliding control, which is this component here that allows us to swipe between the different inputs and sort of play around with that. And then we'll talk about the data model. We're gonna to have to be doing some calculations with a 
payment term and we're going to have some of that payment calculator um, math so we've got that math equation that we need to implement and then we will um, be getting into some of the final portions of the ui and so that's going to be this estimated payments card as well as this whole card here and then adding those drop shadows that they look sexy and they sort of pop out so that is the direction that we're going to go and kind of make a fun looking and fully functional app so let's get started with the navigation toolbar and uh, let's dive right into it. We're gonna create a brand new project. I'm gonna just move this off to the side. Since we now see what it work, looks like. Um, and then the other thing I wanna call out here is I've already sort of annotated what some of the color values we're gonna need. So these are the RGB color values so that we can grab those and put those into our code. We'll just create like a colors uh, file that's gonna have all of those and the other thing that we're going to need is these graphics. So I've gone ahead and just sort of cut these out. And so I cut them out and I removed the background on these um, so that we have some logos to work with. And I've removed the background on this one. And I've also enhanced. So one of the cool things about Pixelmator is you can do this super resolution. This will enhance the resolution. It will only work a few times, probably one time. Then you start getting more and more artifacts. But it's, it's good enough to get something that we can use in, in the application. So I've already put those on my desktop. I will have, actually, I'll probably need to put those um, two resources into the project folder that we'll be working out of. Um, so let's just open that up. And let's put these resources right here so that you can use those in your own project. Okay, so that is our starting point. I am going to move this off to the side. Can I hide that? Yes. Let's hide this. Now let's get this small and keep this up so that we have a reference point. We're gonna go ahead, I'm using Xcode 16.1. I'm hoping, um, I need to bring this back over so that I can create a new project. Okay, move that back. I'm hoping that um, this one crashes a little bit less and we're gonna call this the payment calculator. And we'll hit next. So if you want the final version, that's gonna be the demo folder, and this is gonna be our newest version. And we're gonna get started with working on the navigation stack so that we can get this background. So let's grab those images. I'm gonna go ahead over here, and we're gonna to go to the asset catalog. We are going to drag in our two images, and those are fine as they are for sort of our working prototype. We're gonna rename this content view, so let's go ahead and do refactor rename. And we're gonna call this the payment calculator. And we'll just click on this to change the comments and that will rename our code file. So we should see something here. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start stubbing out the UI. And so let me move some stuff around. And to do this, we are going to um, work with a navigation stack. And so in here, we're gonna have a navigation stack. And then this will just be contained within it. And then we are going to have a V stack in it, but we're also gonna use a Z stack. And the Z stack is gonna allow us to get that background color. I'm gonna comment out that padding for right now. Not sure. We don't want it at this level. Well, we might, let me think about this. That actually might work now. Um, so we'll keep that. Okay, so if we want a background color on the top, we need to use a color. And in this case, I'll just use color.blue to start. And we'll see that we have this. 
To make this go up into the navigation stack area, we need to do dot ignore safe area. And now that will sort of fill the space. And then if we want to limit the height so we can get that effect, we are going to do the height and set this to 60. So doing that will give us that. Um, but the next thing that we need to do is it's trying to center everything. And since we don't have any other content that is making this really tall, it's not gonna push it up. So there's a several ways of doing this, but just to make sure that we're doing it, um, going where we want, we're gonna use this alignment parameter and we are going to do the top. And um, so that's gonna give us the top layout. Unfortunately, uh, we still need to push the content up. So let's give us a self a spacer down here. And there we go, we've got our, our layout. Okay, and so this gives us a little bit of overlap. So we could see some of this overlap if we had, um, if I embed another view stack in here and we then give this a background of white, we'll see that we can sort of get that overlap effect underneath the navigation bar. Okay, so now what we wanna do is we wanna throw in a element into this top portion. So we're gonna use the toolbar modifier and we're gonna do that on the this outer V stack that has this padding. Uh, so we're gonna do dot toolbar and then we're gonna give it some content. And so the content that we're gonna give it is a toolbar item. Um, just to simplify things, I'm gonna start breaking things out and we'll call this toolbar item. And this will be some view. We'll make this a view builder just in case we need to leverage any of that. Um, sometimes the compiler will complain depending on the types, if, especially if you do if else statements. And so then for this tool bar item, let's go ahead and put the image. So we're gonna have a V stack and we're going to have a image and that is gonna be our image that we imported. And then we're going to have a title, which is gonna be text. And that is going to be this payment calculator. So just looking at how the design looks, we can start to customize this. Okay, so now we have um, that and we're seeing that appear up top. We're gonna give this the principal placement option. So there's a placement parameter here and we should be able to go principal. And This needs to be a toolbar item. Sorry. Do, do, do. Toolbar item has the placement properties. So that allows us to get up top, but we don't have the image title. So let's go into our assets catalog. We will grab it. It's called M logo. So we're gonna use that here. And this is pulling from our assets catalog. Okay, and then in order to get this, get this to fit, we're gonna to have to make this resizable and, and shrink down the size. So let's go ahead and do resizable and then set the aspect ratio. And we're gonna do fit. And then we are going to set the frame width 40. So that's gonna make it a little bit bigger. To get some spacing along the top, we're gonna to do a spacer and then we're gonna set this to 
a height of, um, let's try 20, see what that looks like. That's gonna shift it down. We could try 40 and that's gonna give us that. Um, if we want this a little bit bigger, we can make this bigger. We're gonna have a challenge of um, using this approach versus a totally custom UI, we're going to have a limit on how big. Um, actually, maybe it's not. Maybe it's not going to impact us. Let's see. Let's see what we can do. I think we're just going to be impacted on the the spacing to the top. So um, we have a different um, safe area than this one. So this one has the notch, and this one has the the cutout for the dynamic island. So we're gonna see that a little bit different. And then lastly, let's just customize this text. So we're gonna go with a title font. And then with that, we will see how that looks. I want it to be a little bit more bold, so I'll just make it bold. And then we want to change the foreground style to white so that it stands out. And that is our first sort of foray into all of this. Um, the next thing is we want to customize the the padding maybe on the top of our content. So this is our content here. And we might want to control the, so this padding. Oh, interesting. It stretches all the way up there. We don't want that. Um, so what we've done so far is we've set the navigation bar by setting the color in a V stack or sorry, a Z stack. We have the alignment along the top and that gives us this sort of full bleed into the safe area. There is no drop shadow um, that's gonna affect our layout. So that's gonna give us this effect. And then our next step is we're gonna be building the cards and to build the card, we're gonna need that uh, slider. So. In the next portion, we're going to dive into actually making that slider, and then we can build the next component, which will be the selector. And once we have those two, we'll build out the card experience. All right, thanks for watching. Um, if you need any of the code, hop on to the link down below, and you can go ahead and grab that code. And I will see you in the next video where we start working on the slider. Thanks for watching.